What's going on everybody and welcome to part five of the JavaScript basics tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be getting into object-oriented programming. So object-oriented programming is a specific programming paradigm and with JavaScript, there's actually many programming paradigms. It's a multi-paradigm programming language. Uh, so you can do things also like functional programming and others. Uh, I'm just gonna do object-oriented programming. It makes the most sense to me, I've tried functional programming, I just can't. So, and functional programming is not to be confused with writing functions. Like pretty much everything we've done up to this point is script. Uh, so we write some variables, we're using functions just, just to make our lives easier, um, but we're not doing like functional programming here. So anyway, so why might we wanna use one of the paradigms? So with anything, just like with editors and programming languages and significant others, you wanna try a few and go with the one that you like the best. So the one that everybody else likes isn't necessarily the one for you. So with object-oriented programming or any of these other ones, the reason why we wanna start doing this is, is in general, we wanna be able to abstract things out and build on top of things. So in the case of blob here, in order for us to have, um, let's say we, like in, in my case, I wanna have many blobs. Okay, this is fine for the one blob, but when it comes time where we wanna have maybe 10, 15, 30 blobs, this becomes a lot more challenging because now we, we you know, we, we could assign some sort of, uh, what do they call it? And I think it's called object literal in JavaScript. So it's like a dictionary in Python, but it's like a key to value representation. You know, you, you could do something like that and track them, but that's going to be so messy and silly for what we actually want to do. So with object oriented programming, we define this object and this object has attributes and methods and the attributes are like descriptions, right? Like, like, What's the size of the blob? Where is the blob located? What's its color? Those would be the attributes. And then a method might be move. Okay, so doing things, right? That's what we're gonna use methods for. So that's object-oriented programming. And then basically we just define this blob object and then we create variables that are a blob object. And then it just becomes so much more simple to expand and grow and build on top of this blob object and manage many blobs this way. I'm not saying it can't be done purely with writing functions the way we've done it. I can think of a few ways to do it. It's just probably not the best way. <laughs> uh, and then also if you make classes and stuff, your code just becomes much more usable either by yourself in the future or for others. Okay, shut the heck up. Let's go. Somebody will post a timestamp Tutorial starts at 15 minutes in. Okay, so so I'm actually gonna leave the function here for now, uh, just because we're gonna copy pasta some of these things. Um, so to start our definition of our class, we literally just say class, and then we say the class name of what it is, and then it's some curly doodads, and then we're good to go. Now the class is gonna contain um, most of the lines will be methods, most likely. Uh, but the first method is called your constru constructor method. Now this is the one that if when you define a ver or you define your object, if you wanted to be able to pass certain values, these are where you're gonna pass them. So you'll notice I didn't put you know parentheses here. It's not because I forgot. It's because actually they go here. So. In your constructor method, we're gonna pass color in size and then the code to the method. So it looks a lot like a function. Um, now the only big difference is basically with this constructor method, anytime you define a blob object, the constructor method will be run. So uh, in this case, anything we put in here is gonna be run. Now generally what you actually put in here are the attributes. So we're gonna have the attributes like X and well, I don't know why I didn't, in, anyway, X and Y and uh, color and size. These are the things that are gonna go in here. Now, in order to make these attributes accessible across the entire object, we actually lead them with a this, I don't, it's not a keyword, I don't think. I'm not really sure what to call this word. Some JavaScript expert that's watching these tutorials for some reason can comment below. Anyway, we lead them with this, and it just refers to this object. So we're just gonna say this.x, this.y, this.color, 
and this dot the os this dot size it's like self in python so now we're going to say is this dot x equals um and in this case we're just going to start these randomly so i'm going to say math dot random which is just a built-in and now math dot random generates a random a pseudo random number between zero and one so we can treat that like it's a percentage and just say math dot random times canvas dot width boom done and then we're going to do the exact same thing with y except rather than the width that would be the height uh, then this dot color is equal to the color that got passed in those parameters. This dot size, same story there. Uh, let's do our semicolons because we're good little JavaScripters. So now uh, what we want to do is um, we're going to define the X change and Y change. So we're going to say this dot X change equals, we'll say one for now. This dot uh, Y change is also equal to one. Great. I think at that point we've got all of the initial methods that we want oh, I'm sorry <laughs> initial attributes that we want and now we're gonna write our methods <laughs> so uh, coming down here um, I kinda wanna point out older so sometimes I'll save it for the end hopefully in the end I'll remember so I'll probably finish this tutorial and at the end I'm gonna bring up how old <clears throat> old classes were defined so stick around if you want to look at that because the problem is with JavaScript there's so much like outdated JavaScript that just keeps getting recycled and I'm sure that somewhere in here I'm making that sin as well I'm doing my best to like write the new ES6 stuff but I'm sure I'm screwing that up so <laughs> anyway so call me out on it if I do um, but anyway um, I will show that at the end how you might see other people using classes because it's completely, it looks different than this. You'd be like, wait, what's this? So anyway, moving along, uh, the next regular method that we're going to make is the move method. And move will not take any parameters for now, but later it might. And in fact, let me just zoom in a little bit so everybody can see. Hopefully that's better. Can everybody in the back see that? Okay, so now, I'm so freaking funny. So so move is basically going to be this code here. So actually, I'm just going to cut that, bop on up here, pasta that, uh, fix the indenting. E boom. Ah, oh, I went too far. Oh, no. Shouldn't that... Oh, dear. <laughs> I thought you could do um, closing or opening square brackets and that would shift back over. Anyway, uh, I don't know. Okay, <clears throat> so now to access this value, this is why we use this. So now we can actually, even though these are what appear to be two totally separate methods, there are me separate methods in the same of the same object so or the same class. So we can actually reference them in from inside different methods. So Actually, I just need to say this.x, uh, this.x change, this.x. And then we're just going to continue doing that here, here, and here. This is super error prone, but I think we'll make it. Uh, boom. Cool. So now we have our move method completed. So now the next thing, uh, my dog is currently dreaming, and I think he's barking at things. Sorry. Uh, so we're going to come down here, and I'm actually going to add another method called draw. And um, I'm a little undecided as where whether draw should actually go inside of here or not. Uh, we might actually make draw a separate thing entirely and maybe make it put it just in a function or something like that to draw all the blob objects, the blob objects. Uh, but I'm going to put it in here for now. Um, just because I want more than one method, honestly. <laughs> uh, so to do this, we're going to copy everything except for clear rect, because we don't want every time we draw any blob, we don't want to clear that entire canvas. So pasta that up in there, and in this case, this would be this.x, uh, this.y, this would be this.size, and then this would be this.color. And at this point, we're actually done with the blob function. So I'm going to delete 
the blob function. And in fact, I'm going to delete set interval as well, because uh, we're not going to use that. We will use that in the future, but for now, we don't need that. Uh, and instead, what I would like to do is interact with our blobject. So first of all, to define this, it's it's kind of like a data type. So I don't think we've done arrays yet. I can't remember. <laughs> but anytime you make this new object, it will be like variable, like let or const, the name of it, and then it's a new object type, right? And then you pass the parameters. So for, for us, that's const, and then I'm gonna call this new blob. So that's just the variable name, and that's equal <clears throat> to a new blob object. And then the parameters we're gonna pass are green and 25 because it is, uh, that's the color and the size that we want. So if we come up here, remember that was passed through the constructor method. So um, now I'm just going to say uh, new blob dot draw. And that should draw it to our page because we've defined the canvas. So let's go ahead and run this, see if we hit any errors. <clears throat> Nope, there's our blob, beautiful. So the next thing I just, we can actually open up the console. So that's usually like F12 and then you go into console. Now this is unbearably tiny. I wish I could make this larger for everybody, but I don't think uh, if I scroll in, I don't think that does anything. <laughs> Let's see if there's a quick font size here. Uh, tab size, key bindings. No, oh dear. <laughs> Lovely. I'm on a, a VPS, so. Uh, dang it. I really wish there was a font size, but there's not. So just listen and follow along. So what we're going to do is, is um, so we've drawn it. Now what we can do is actually interact with it in the console even. You could do this in your code as well, but we just reference that new blob. So it's all lowercase except for the B in blob. Dot. And then we can do move, semicolon, enter. That blob is moved. Now we can actually draw it. So new uh, capital B blob dot draw, open and close parentheses, semicolon, boom. You should have seen it update on my page, but probably on yours as well. So now we can just like up arrow twice, up arrow twice, and just keep doing that. And we can see that the blob is slowly moving. And that's how we're interacting with it uh, in the console. So pretty cool. Now, um, I think that's probably everything I want to cover for before we get into making many blobs because the whole reason we were doing this is so we could have many blobs, but in order to have many blobs, we need to cover for loops and somehow Pro Tutorials Syntax Guy has gotten us into object-oriented programming in a basic series before for loops. Huh. Good job. So we need to use for loops and that's a different concept and I don't really feel like covering that here. So uh, I still have, I still wanna show you guys old classes and I'm gonna do that uno momento. Uh, but first, shout out to my most recent channel members, Backwards R and Michael Michelle Berardi. Uh, I don't know, tell me in the comments, is that Michael or Michelle if you're watching? Um, okay, so what I'd like to do now is just talk for a moment about how the old classes looked because they're kind of silly. So, so in the past, it would be something like this. It would be like function uh, blob. I might be screwing some of this up, but it was basically like this. And then you would have your init method and they would just call it init. And actually, I want to say it was actually an embedded function. So it would be like function in it and then some stuff. And then sometimes people would just end it with open and close parentheses and that would run it immediately. But then other times you would see people would call in it right after their init method. I don't think that was ever actually object oriented programming, but they would also use this, the, this keyword or I'm sorry, I mean, it was object-oriented programming, but I don't really know in, on the back end how JavaScript actually ran things. But just so you know, you might see something like this. I know I've seen it around. I pro Honestly, I see this more often than I see the classes. Uh, 
<laughs> and that seems to be true with a lot of uh, ES6. Like, I, I don't, I don't know why is it the case that, like, like the first time I saw let being used, and this, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> was uh, when I started using TensorFlow.js. Uh, and so I, I don't know. I don't know why it's, it's almost like, like I thought the difference between Python 2 and 3, uh, that like chasm was bad, but it seems like this chasm is worse because you got both people using it and there's no like update that forces anybody to use one or the other. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, super confusing for, uh, someone like me first coming into here and it's like, wait, <laughs> Which, what do I use? And like, if you Google how to do object-oriented programming in JavaScript, you're often gonna find not this way, you're gonna find the old way. So anyway, if you ever do Google stuff with JavaScript, I highly recommend uh, ending it with ES6. Anyways, goodbye. Dog is leaving, so I guess that's the end of the tutorial. People are leaving the class, so. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. And in the next tutorial, we will cover a couple of for loops and just kind of iterating over some blobjects, making many blobs, um, and just making a really satisfying canvas of blobs just bouncing around. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you there.